to rise in their places. I call the honourable member for McMahon. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Well, Madam Speaker, there are times when our government has to consider that so much damage has been done to an economy, that so much is at risk in an economy, that there are forces at play in an economy that the government has to step in and spend money. There are times when the international economy has turned so badly that a government has to spend and stimulate the economy. It happened during the period of the previous Labor government. The worst financial crisis and economic crisis in 60 years, Labor stepped in and Labor took action. And didn't they rail against it, Madam Speaker? Didn't they complain that too much was being spent? Well, Madam Speaker, another Treasurer has decided that so much damage has been done to the economy, so that confidence is so low, that the economy is so bad that they've had to increase spending to GFC levels, Madam Speaker. To GFC levels. We see spending outlined in last night's budget at 25.9 per cent of the economy. 26 per cent during the depths of the global financial crisis and 25.9 per cent now as they strive desperately to improve the economy after the smashing of confidence that they have perpetrated over the last 12 months. Madam Speaker. This says, along with all the other backflips, with all the other problems in their budget preparation, that this government stands for nothing. This government stands for absolutely nothing. We see the government walking away from their, for, for, their formal and solemn commitments about budget surpluses. The Treasurer used to tell us there's no revenue problem in Australia, only a spending problem, he used to tell us. He's told us that time and time again, and we find spending on his watch the same as during the depths of the global financial crisis. That tells us, Madam Speaker, just how lucky in substance this Treasurer is. And we see spending at 1.3 per cent in the economy higher than that was left under the Labor government. And we see the budget's own documents outlining the impact of government decisions. Madam Speaker. There's a very important table in, in the budget papers, and it outlines the impact of government decisions. And it shows that government decisions, the impact of government decisions has blown out the budget deficit by $9 billion. Nine billion dollars. They say, "Oh, we've, we've paid for everything. We've paid for everything. All everything we've done is offset by other savings." It's just not right. I saw the finance minister on late line last night, and he, this was put to him, and he said, "Oh, you're forgetting one point: the savings from our paid parental leave scheme." He said, in a cunning plan. So they are suggesting that their savings comes from. A program never they never implemented, Madam Speaker. <laughs> now, I'm, a, I'm on good terms with the Shadow Finance Minister, he's a friend of mine, the member for Watson. But if I went to him and said, I've got a cunning plan, <laughs> why don't we come up with a big, outrageous, expensive plan, that everyone will bag us out. and then we don't proceed with it, and then we can claim it as a saving? <laughs> I think he would suggest I take some time out to reflect on my grip on reality, Madam Speaker. That's what he would suggest. As good a terms as I'm on with the member for Watson, he would tell me I've lost my grip on reality if I suggested abolishing a program that we were never implemented and claiming it as a saving as part of a cunning fiscal plan, Madam Deputy Speaker. That's what this government's done. That's what the member for Kuyong's done. Member Minister for Finance has done. That's what they would do. Now, we see the debt and deficit disaster, the debt and deficit disaster, Madam Speaker, that we heard so much about. And as the, as the parliamentary secretary points out, we've had the fire truck analogy. The prime minister telling us that the fire truck pulled up on the day of the last election and started putting out the fire of the deficit, Madam Speaker. Well, it turns out the fire truck pulled out, pulled up. The fireman got out, had a look around, kicked the tyres, popped back in the fire truck, and drove back to the station. Madam Speaker. That's what happened with the fire truck, because you see the budget deficit doubled from just last year when the treasurer stood at the dispatch box. The budget deficit has doubled over four years in just one year. This is their impact. This is the debt and deficit disaster. This is their way of dealing with the debt and deficit disaster is to double the debt and deficit disaster. That'll fix it. We'll double the debt and deficit disaster. That's our cutting plan, says the Treasurer. No wonder people are asking. <laughs> Madam Speaker, people are asking, what is the point of the Abbott government? What is the point of the Abbott government? 
Those Australians who said in 2013, I'm not sure about this, I don't really trust that Leader of the Opposition, I'm not sure that I trust his judgment, Tony Abbott, but he's got a plan to get us back into surplus. He'll get the deficit down, so we'll give him a go. Many Australians said, not sure about it, not sure that we trust him, but we'll give him a go. And so, well, what has he done? What's the Prime Minister done to those voters who put their trust in the member for Ringer? He's doubled the deficit as his plan to deal with the, with the, with, with, with the debt and deficit disaster. And Madam Speaker, despite all this, the prejudice remains. The prejudice remains in the budget. And in fact, it's gotten worse. Now we know that many of the measures in the budget of last year remain. The hundred thousand dollar university degrees, still there. The eighty billion dollars worth of cuts to health and education, still there. The cuts to family tax benefit, still there, and linked to childcare reforms, turning the budget document into one long ransom note, Madam Speaker. One long ransom note on Australian families to say, we won't give you more money. We won't give you more assistance for your childcare unless we get to take even more money than that away from you in your family tax benefit. The prejudice at the heart of the Abbott government. And we see that prejudice on display very clearly at question time today, because it's gotten worse, not even in the last budget, the worst budget in 60 years did they try and take money away from Australian and time with their newborn babies away from Australian mothers in an ambush of Australian families? Abbott's ambush of Australian families. They claim, Madam Speaker, it was an election commitment to remove uh, the entitlement to government pay parental scheme if your employer provides it as well. I don't recall it being a central feature of the election campaign of the opposition. I, I, I do submit to you, Madam Speaker. I don't recall it being a central feature. I do recall paid parental leave being mentioned by the now Prime Minister, but in a very different way than what he's now, he's now alleging to the Australian people, he said. But the prejudice is clear. We see the Minister for Social Security. I note, Madam Speaker, there's an opportunity for members to have claimed to have been misrepresented at the end of question time. <laughs> I didn't hear the Minister for Social Security jumping to his feet to deny calling it a fraud. Or the Treasurer. The Treasurer could have denied calling it a fraud, Madam Speaker. I didn't hear a, a, a personal explanation taken to deny this claim. No, because you know, perhaps in a moment of weakness, they showed their true agenda. They showed their true prejudice. Now, the Minister for Social Services is on quite a campaign. The new, the new Minister for Social Services, the soft and cuddly Minister for Social Services, well, he could start by apologising to Australian mothers. He could start by apologising, admitting he got it wrong, Madam Speaker, admitting that he should never have said that. But he won't do that. He won't do that because he still believes it. Because they stand by the policy, Madam Speaker. It's an outrageous policy that they have. It is an insult to the Australian people. For the Treasurer, the Minister for Social Services, the Prime Minister, the Assistant Treasurer, to say to those people who negotiated things in good faith, those people who negotiated with their employers and gave up wage increases and gave up other conditions so they could spend more time with newborn children to call them rotters and to take this condition away in a, in a clear breach, a clear breach of an election commitment, Madam Speaker. They were promised a roll gold parental leave scheme and instead they get Abbott's ambush from this Prime Minister who stands for nothing except for prejudice. Now, this, is the, this is the sort of treatment we see from uh, this government of Australian families, and it runs through the last budget, and it runs through this budget, and it will run, I predict, Madam Speaker, until we see the defeat of the Abbott government. Until we see the defeat of this government, we will see this prejudice exhibited time and time again. And prejudice, Madam Speaker, which results in the, in the budget deficit doubling as their impact on improving the budget bottom line. We know, Madam Speaker, we know, Madam Speaker, that the Treasurer has told us there are no alternatives <coughs> but his way. We also know that is not true, Madam Speaker. The Assistant Treasurer might in his remarks talk about some of the alternatives. He might in his remarks talk about Labor's plan to make sure multinationals pay a fair share of tax, Madam Speaker. Or he might talk at his plan might talk dollars. about superannuation. The Assistant Treasurer is here, Madam Speaker. I had a feeling he might be here, and uh, I've got a soft spot for the assistant treasurer. He's not the best assistant treasurer we've ever had, <laughs> but he's in the top ten, Madam Speaker. They have been eleven. <laughs> but he issued a press release last night. He said, "And Bill Shorten and Chris Bowen need to get their stories straight. One says the budget is too soft, and the other says it's not tough enough." <laughs> Madam Speaker, 
<laughs> Maybe in his remarks he could explain what the difference is between being too soft on the one hand and not tough enough on the other, Madam Speaker. We'd love to hear it. You can start with it. There's an introduction for the Assistant Treasurer. We'd love to hear him explain the difference between too soft and not tough enough.